Hello! In this episode I have Korg Electribe MK2 for repair. This thing does not turn on and it was sold with no power supply. It is in a pretty good shape as you can see. And uh, it needs 9 volt uh, DC supply with a negative tip. Unfortunately, the current is not specified. I found this uh, Panasonic supply, 9 volts, 850 milliamps. Most probably this should be enough. And it has a negative tip. And the connector fits perfectly here. So, let's try. I tried this already. And nothing happens. So, let's take this thing apart and have a look. I took the back cover off. And uh, here we have uh, two board construction. That board is the front panel. And I already see a problem here. There is a broken inductor there. And uh, something is wrong with that electrolytic capacitor. So let's take this board out and have a closer look at the damage. So, I pulled off all the knobs and managed to remove this board. And look at this. We have a blown electrolytic capacitor here, damaged inductor, and a couple of burnt small SOT23 uh, chips there. So this must be some sort of a DC to DC converter. It should be fixable, but the biggest worry, of course, is if there was some uh, sort of a spike on the power rail, which might have killed something else, which is hard or impossible to replace. I took a few pictures so we can have a closer look. This is the exploded capacitor, and the mess from the explosion is not too bad. There is some residue here on the pots and even here on this chip, but overall not too bad. But apparently the explosion damaged this inductor and I found this broken off piece inside of the unit. This is a 22 microhenry inductor and there is a better view here and also a better view of the chips. These are SOT23 chips. This one is 6-pin chip and this is a 5-pin chip. This 6-pin uh, chip looks completely burnt. And we can still see the marking JB. And perhaps there was something here but not readable anymore. And this looks like free. And this 5-pin chip looks damaged as well. The marking is BO or maybe zero, JM. And maybe this diode is damaged a bit as well, I'm not sure. This is a side view of the capacitor, Jack Con, 85 degrees C. And this is the other side. We can see 16 volts and 470 microfarads. There is a better view of that here. We can clearly see 470. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the schematic for ER1 MK2, but I found this schematic for model EM1, and the title here is KLM2270. And the board we have is marked KLM2475. So this is an older schematic. But this uh, 5 volt um, DC to DC converter seems close enough to what we have on the board. 
this is the 6-pin chip which is a MOSFET CPH6302 and this is the 5-pin chip S8520 which is a step-down DC to DC converter here we have this diode and the 22 micro Henry inductor some capacitors here one more inductor 10 micro Henry we have seen it on the board as well and I believe the exploded capacitor is connected to this second inductor but on this schematic we have 330 microfarads 6.3 volts for some reason and there is a 470 microfarad uh, 16 volts capacitor here but I believe on the board there is a 220 microfarad a 25 volts capacitor in this place so it seems close enough and here I found the data sheet for the MOSFET which is a p-channel MOSFET CPH6302 6 pin package and look at this marking JB so this seems to be the right part this is a data sheet for the step down converter S8520 or 21 SOT 235 package there are different versions with different output voltages and different uh, oscillation frequencies and here we have a table with different markings but I don't see BOJM I only see this is the closest one BOJT which is a 5 volt version so I'm not entirely sure why that particular version is not listed here but uh, I think we need 5 volt uh, version of this chip I'm not sure about the frequency I found the step down converter chip on DigiKey this is a 5 volt version and uh, 60 kilohertz switching frequency I'm not sure the frequency is important but this is the only version available with 5 volts uh, output and I hope this is good enough 98 cents a piece available immediately and I also found a Panasonic inductor with dimensions very close to what we have on the board and I hope other parameters are close enough these are $1.93 a piece and unfortunately I couldn't find the MOSFET either on DigiKey or Mouser but I found them on eBay $1.86 for 5 pieces and $2.50 shipping from China this will take a while perhaps about two weeks or so all the replacement parts have arrived these are five MOSFETs from eBay inductor from DigiKey a couple of step-down converters also from DigiKey and I did not order capacitors because I have plenty of them uh, this one is a 16 volt capacitor exactly the same dimensions as the original one and this one is a 25 volt capacitor slightly taller but not taller than some other parts on the board so I'm inclined to use this 25 volt capacitor let's try rebuilding this step-down converter and hope that the rest is alive bad components are removed here was the blown capacitor broken inductor step-down converter here the diode is fine no problem at all and here was the MOSFET I couldn't even desolder it easily it basically welded itself to the copper traces so I had to rip it out 
and uh, the only part survived is the gate and it's damaged slightly as well new components are installed capacitor here, inductor step down converter and the MOSFET I'm powering this up from a lab supply so that the current is limited and we can easily see it let's turn it on and we see about 40 milliamps which is low and what I see is that the 5 volt rail is present here on this inductor uh, and on this second one which is a smaller 10 micro Henry inductor so the uh, step down converter uh, is working but this does not reach the chips and uh, there is a small surface mount fuse here I vaguely remember checking it before and I believe it was fine but I'm not entirely sure now I see 5 volts before it and nothing after it and if it failed now it's not a good sign but let's check let's turn this thing off and uh, check if there is a short let's say to the ground after that fuse and no we see about let's say 32 ohms and uh, if we divide 5 volts uh, by 32 that's about let's say 160 milliamps uh, which is reasonable and of course this can change when uh, active devices start turning on and such but at least uh, this does not look like a short and uh, it does not look unreasonable so let's um, replace the fuse and try again here is this fuse and i believe this is a 3 amp fast acting fuse something like this probably a different brand i'm not sure and if we look here for the specs of 3 amp fuse the current at which it should work indefinitely is 1.2 amps and at 3 amps it should blow in less than a second I don't have a replacement but I happen to have a lot of these 2 amp fast acting fuses and I guess it should be good enough for a test it is slightly bigger but I can fit it somehow temporarily here it is, should be good enough for a test so with the new fuse installed this thing takes 336 milliamps with the front panel connected and unfortunately absolutely no signs of life and I don't like my chances something must be dead here in particular this DSP is getting very warm I don't think this is normal let's have a look at this DSP uh, this is my thermal camera and the cross in the center is not aligned uh, at such close distances with the picture so I need to aim a little higher so I'm just looking around trying to see what's the maximum temperature there and it seems to be around 63 degrees or so and I don't think this is healthy let's see what do we have here this is a Hitachi microcontroller H8S-2350 and this is a ROMless version which means that uh, firmware is not inside of this thing but uh, here in this flash chip which is 29F800 
8 megabit flash. And this separation is good in general because quite often it's impossible to read firmware from microcontrollers. I'm not familiar with this particular microcontroller, but very often they have a protection bit or something like that. Uh, so once programmed, it's impossible to read firmware. Uh, but in this case, at least potentially, it's possible to read firmware from a good unit, even if this one is dead completely. But that's quite another story. Uh, let's see, these two are identical RAM chips, and this is uh, Texas Instruments DSP TMS 57070FPJ. I do have a programmer TL866 uh, with some adapters, but I don't have an adapter for this package, uh, which is TSOP48. If I had an adapter, I would probably try uh, desoldering this flash and reading it. And if it is alive and uh, data looks sensible, uh, then uh, it makes sense to proceed, perhaps, uh, assuming these uh, chips are available. Uh, and they probably are, but not sure how easy it is to get them and how expensive they are. Uh, so I think I would declare fail for now. Maybe this can be done, uh, but uh, at least I need to order an adapter for this flash chip or another way would be just to replace microprocessor and DSP and hope that the flash is alive Maybe memory chips are dead as well, who knows. So, for now I'm going to say this is beyond economical repair. I'll think about it, perhaps probe around a little more, maybe order an adapter for the programmer and try reading this flash. I'm not sure yet, but um, at the moment it looks like it's a fail. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.